Welcome back to day three of our Salila Falls reading and writing activities for the week of March 23rd. Today is March 27th, 2020. And we are going to continue today with reading I Wish I Had Seen the Falls, part one. Last time we saw a little bit about the geography about uh, Salilo Falls, which is in between Washington and Oregon along the Columbia River. We talked about how sacred this fishing site is to Native nations, not just in the Pacific Northwest, but as far away as the Great Lakes down into Northern California. And we talked about uh, envisioning this place while you envision your own really special cool place. And I want you to use my reading of the story today as a model for what you might be asking yourself as you, uh, as you continue to draft a story of your own about your own space. It might be real, it might be fictionalized, um, and it might be based on the memories you have there. So let me tell you a little bit about the author. The author is Carol Craig. Carol Craig is an elder and a citizen of the Yakima Nation. She's also the lead reporter for the Yakima Nation Review, their newspaper. She is known internationally for her wisdom, for her journalistic talent, and for just being an amazing woman. So we thank her for this story. So a couple of things before. Salilo means echo of water on rocks. Listen. The first thing everybody remembers or recalls is the roar of the water. You, know, you can hear that roar of the water miles away before you even got by the place and all of a sudden you come upon it. It was beautiful miss where there was the sound of the water you can hardly hear yourself think when you get down there and you have to yell to be heard Slime Falls made a terrific lot of noise when you got close to it that's when it's exciting that, that's when it's really good yep. you can hear the roar of the water and um, and something that is amazing to me is that it's been told that someone would be standing right next to you. You'd have to use sign language because the roar of the falls was so powerful. And whenever I hear people tell stories about it, they always talk about that sound, the roar, like it's thunder. And so think about that as you listen to part one of today's story. Uh, after we read the story, I'll go over the prompts. The prompts are in your packet if you downloaded it from the district site or if you got a copy of the packet from your meal site. But it's okay if you don't have that because I will I will have the questions that I want you to think about. Maybe you'll write some something down in response, but I want you to be thinking about uh, the details and how you might include details in your story and retelling of your story. So here we go. Salilo Falls, and I have two photos here for you to take a look at as you listen. I wish I could have seen the falls. Carol Craig says that this story comes from many stories, from many elders that I have listened to throughout my life. Grandparents are a natural part of tribal family life, and most times they teach the grandchildren lessons about the history of the tribe as well as tradition and culture. In this story, the narrator is Chucky, an 11-year-old Yakima boy. He lives near the Columbia River at a village site on the Oregon side of the river, as did his parents and his grandparents. Chucky has his daily chores. He and his grandmother share their time talking while his mother and father are at work. When fishing starts, his parents go to the river to get their share of fish to eat fresh or prepare for future use. Salmon has always been a part of their meals and is considered very important to their culture and tradition as a tribal people. So here we go. I've always learned a lot from my grandma. And she is a good teacher. She always talks about long time ago and what it was like then. As I learn from her, she tells me she did the same thing when she was young. Her grandma taught her many things and that is why she teaches me every day. 
One day, I saw her looking at some old pictures. I had never seen them before. What are you looking at, Grandma? I asked her. Come, sit down and I will tell you, grandson. Then you will understand. She told me long before any tribal people were on Mother Earth, the Creator made a very special place for the tribal people. She said, see this picture? I looked and I could see a huge wide waterfall and lots of people fishing with others just watching the fishermen. It was called Celilo Falls and it means echo of the falling water. Then grandma showed me more pictures of the falls and all the people that came to that place along the Columbia River. Some of the pictures were so old they had a different color to them. Grandma described what the falls were like. You could always hear the roar of the falls. Even from a long distance away, the sound was always there. That's where I grew up. And I was used to the thundering noise day and night and the mist of the falling water was everywhere. You hear the words that grandma uses. She uses thunder and the mist and the falling water. She uses those, uh, those words, those vivid words, so that we can really picture, so that we can envision, just like we did uh, with the other uh, stories and my memories that, was that I was talking about earlier. So let's continue. What did you do there, Grandma? Grandma told me how when she was little, she would run and play all day. The scars on my knees are from running so fast over the jagged rocks and falling down sometimes, she said. Gee, did you cry, Grandma? No, I was having so much fun it didn't hurt. I'd dust myself off and continue playing and running. When it was time for everyone to begin fishing in the spring, you could smell the fish water, she said. My dad and his brothers would fish and my mother would take care of the salmon after it was caught. Let's pause there for another second. She talks about something called fish water. And I don't think that she means the fish that you smell from the package. I don't even think she thinks the, the fish that you get from a tuna fish can. I don't know if you've ever smelled fish as it just came out of the water or just came from the ice, but there is a cleanliness, kind of a metallic-y, coppery smell. If you smell a penny, it kind of gets a little close, but it's definitely not a fishy smell, not something that you would wrinkle up your nose uh, to. It's something that along with that mist of the water, it's that really clean, beautiful smell. And I think that's what grandma is talking about when she says fish water. So let's continue. Grandma told me that as soon as it got warmer, children would ask if they could go swimming. <clears throat> My cousins and I even had a special place on the river where we would go down and swim. And my mother always warned us not to go by ourselves. Sometimes we would go and forget to tell my mother because we were so excited. Other times we would play down by the canal barges and the drawbridge where the cable cars were. So you can see cables right here. The cables right here. And this is, this is a little cart where the fishers would pull themselves from one um, side of the bank to the island and back. We, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we'd get on and go across the water to the island, Grandma said. Auntie or uncle would see us and take us back to shore. We always got caught and had to be reminded to let them know where we were going, she said. Did you get in trouble for most of that, Grandma? No. They always warned us to be careful, and finally we started to tell them each time we wanted to go down to the river to swim. Grandma said a lot of people would come from a long ways just to go to that part of the river to fish. People would travel from as far away as the Great Lakes area, Montana, the Washington coast. They came from all over, Grandma said. Her eyes sparkling. There was dancing, games, and people visited and traded. I asked grandma what people brought to trade. Oh, it was 
always something that we didn't have here, like buffalo hides and meat, shells from the coast, horses, baskets, and anything you could think of. The dancing started late at night and sometimes went into the daylight hours. Some of the people were known for their skills in fancy dance, war dances, and even couples who would do what we call the round dance. Grandma said that as the months went by, different kinds of salmon came to the fall so they could continue their journey upriver and go to where they were born. She said that some of the fish would go as far as the Nez Perce country and even farther. Now we're gonna stop there. Grandma says Nez Perce country, so that's gonna be all the way across the state of Washington um, into the southern part of, um, no, I'm sorry, the northern part of, of Idaho and then also down into uh, the eastern part of Oregon as well. And so, uh, so the salmon would go from the Pacific Ocean all the way up inland that far. Pretty amazing. Grandma also talked about something called a round dance, and many of you might not be familiar, but a round dance is a really well-known uh, dance that you, would, uh, that you would dance at powwows. And sometimes it's a, it's a single dance and sometimes it's a couple's dance. And, and grandma talks about a couple's dance. And so I have, um, I have a, um, a little video to show you of a round dance at a powwow. You're going to notice some people in regular street clothes. You're going to notice a lot of young men singing and drumming. And then you're also going to notice that the people dancing, some of them are in regalia. We never call them costumes. They are in their regalia, their, their tribal finery. And that is, that is uh, what they use to dance in. That is, the, that is what they wear. And so you'll notice that as well. So let's watch just a little bit. I'll stop there. Um, <clears throat> the men are singing, they're singing words. They're singing in their tribal language. And so when you hear music like that, don't ever think that it is just nonsense and people people just singing like doo-wop or la-la. That, that there's actual meaning to those words and those, those songs are really special. So <clears throat> thank you for watching the video so that you understand a little bit more about the round dance and the celebrations that happen at Celilo Falls. I don't think that that's necessarily something that you would be able to envision on your own. So I said that we do have some writing prompts that I would invite you uh, to at least think about if you want to write them down on your packet or on a piece of paper that would be great but just write down what you heard and what you saw today and what do you think would happen next use your prediction skills what happened what's important and what do you think is going to happen next what does grandma mention in particular that we should probably pay attention to uh, i also want you to make an inference what do you think um, about the importance of salmon, what do you, um, of salmon and Celilo Falls to the people in the story. How important do you think it is and why do you think that is? Now, I also want you to reread your descriptions that you wrote from the first couple of days in your own packet or on your own piece of paper. And I want you to think about beginning to draft the beginning of your story. Would it have that prologue like Grandma has? Would it 
uh, would it have two characters talking about memories or would it be something different? So take some time to do that today or another day. And until next time, until part two of I Wish I Had Seen the Falls, I wish you a good day and we will see you next time. Thank you.